What is going on people? Welcome back to Double Clutch Auto Reviews and thank you so much again for tuning in for another review video. My name is Mark and today I am here with the 2023 Volkswagen Golf GTI 40th Anniversary Edition. This is a special edition of the Mark 8 GTI that Volkswagen released to pay homage to the GTI being in the United States for 40 years. The 2023 Volkswagen GTI competes with the Honda Civic Si, the Elantra N, the GR Corolla, and even the WRX. And the GTI has always been known to appeal more to the mature sector of the hot hatch market. The trim levels of the 2023 GTI are as such. The S, the base trim, starts at $30,500. The 40th anniversary edition, this one, starts at $33,000. The SE starts at $35,300. And the Autobahn, the top trim, starts over $39,000, almost $40,000 for the top trim GTI. Despite the $10,000 range of all the starting MSRPs of the GTI, they all get the same drivetrain. All GTIs get a two liter turbo four cylinder making 241 horsepower at 6,500 RPMs and 273 pound-feet of torque at 4,000 RPMs. That's up 13 horsepower and 15 pound-feet of torque from the previous generation GTI, the Mark 7, due to reduced friction of the engine internals and higher fuel pressure. And that's mated to either a good old six-speed manual transmission or the DSG seven-speed dual clutch automatic transmission. And that power is sent to the front wheels through an electronically limited slip differential that comes standard on all trims, which is awesome in my book. And it does zero to 60 in just over five seconds with the dual clutch automatic transmission. Fuel economy is rated for 23 miles per gallon in the city, 32 on the highway and 27 average overall in the manual and 24 miles per gallon in the city, 34 on the highway and an average of 28 miles per gallon overall with the dual clutch automatic. And what's crazy is that this car can run on regular 87 octane gas. That is actually pretty cool. You can put 93 in it. The owner of this car, Jeremy, does use 93. But if you need to run regular gas, you can in this car. That is definitely not the norm for these turbocharged German cars. The Mark 8 generation is also 30 pounds lighter than the Mark 7. It's not much, but still it's better than heavier. The seven speed dual clutch weighs 3,206 pounds. The manual transmission shaves off 73 pounds at 3,133 pounds. Volkswagen also increased the chassis rigidity of the Mark 8 over the Mark 7 by around 15%, which is great. The wheelbase of the Mark 8 is 103.6 inches and the width without the mirrors is 70.4 inches. And if you want to opt out for the dual clutch transmission over the six speed manual, it'll run you about $800 more. A quick rundown of all the trims in the new Mark 8 GTI. The S trim, as I said before, comes with the same powertrain as the $10,000 more expensive Autobahn edition. Yet it still comes with some really nice luxurious features standard like LED lighting, heated front seats, a heated steering wheel. You also get the very nice looking interior ambient lighting. And to boot, the base trim has a regular volume and tune knob on the infotainment system. In the base trim, you just have to skimp out on some of the nice features like the sunroof, keyless entry, you have to take your keys out of your pocket, whoop de doo and the upgraded stereo and things like that. But if you want an awesome daily driver package, that's a great option for around $30,000. The 40th anniversary edition, this one, has a limited production of 1,500 units coming to the U.S. and 300 going to Canada. The ones in the U.S. are all evenly split 50-50 with 750 in the automatic and 750 in the manual. The owner of this 40th edition GT Jeremy says that he went with the 40th edition because for the amount of money you're spending over the base trim, you actually get a lot of bang for your buck over the S trim. For instance, the 40th anniversary edition in the US comes with these 19 inch forged wheels from the factory, which shave a lot of weight. It reduces that rotational mass. You also get some exterior touches like the black roof, the black mirror caps, and the LED light bar in the front grille. You also get this nice little 40th anniversary edition badge on the steering wheel and the side decals that you can get optioned if you want. However, the best attribute, in my opinion, over the S trim that you get with the 40th anniversary edition standard is the adaptive suspension dampers. They come standard on the 40th anniversary edition and the Autobahn, but not the SE for some reason, but they are definitely worth it to have, especially if we want the best of both worlds as far as comfort and ride quality and handling performance. The dampers adjust in real time multiple times a second to the road surfaces and imperfections to give you the best ride quality and best handling performance all at the same time. The dampers even will stiffen up the outside wheels when in a corner. For instance, you're taking a left hand turn and they will stiffen up the right side of the car to further reduce body roll. That's really cool. So this specific 40th anniversary edition had a sticker price of $33,855 and that's with the dual clutch transmission. If you want a manual, you can get it for $800 dollars less. So with that being said, over the base trim, you're paying $3,000 more, but you're getting forged wheels, adaptive suspension, and all these little exterior bits 
That is not a bad deal in my opinion. But if you really want to splurge, you can go with the Autobahn edition, which is just around $40,000. But you get leather seats that come standard. You also get heated and ventilated front seats, heated rear seats with tri-zone climate controls. And apparently you also get this advanced air filtration system in the Autobahn edition. Let's say you're behind a nasty diesel truck or something and it smells bad, you can turn this system on and it cleans the air a little bit for you. And now moving on to the styling of the 2023 Mark 8 GTI. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I wasn't really that big of a fan of it at first. I actually preferred the Mark 7 generation a little bit better. When I first saw the Mark 8, I looked at the front fascia in particular and I noticed that the hood came down really low right above the headlights and it almost gave it this like droopy look, I'm not gonna lie, kinda looks like the Chevy Malibu generation right here. But the more and more I look at this GTI, hanging out with it all day, it's actually really growing on me. At first, I felt like the front end of the GTI kind of looked like it was having like this pout face going on as if it has its eyebrows really low, just going like, ugh. But the more I look at the car, the more I forgive it. And I know some of you would disagree with me. A lot of people like the front end of this car a lot better than the Mark 7, but that's just my two cents. I'm also looking at the other styling attributes of the GTI now, like the LED lighting all around, which looks really nice. I also think the side profile and the rear end look pretty good overall. So the GTI ties itself together pretty well. The owner of this car, Jeremy has added some modifications though, including aesthetic and performance mods to spice it up just a little bit. He's added a Maxxons Designs V4 front lip, a Maxxons Designs V2 rear diffuser. He also added a Golf R style wing, not an actual Golf R wing because they're around 1300 bucks, not even painted. And that one still looks the part just as well if you don't really know the difference. He also has a Miltec catback exhaust with black tips. He also plans on getting it tuned, but what's interesting is that these cars have been dynoed at around 240 wheel horsepower from the factory stock tune. So we're guessing that it probably makes around 260 to 270 at the crank. So apparently Volkswagen underrated or underestimated their little GTI's performance here. So now we'll jump into the interior of the GTI and we'll start off back here in the hatch. First off, I have to mention the key looks great. This is a key that I would expect on like a high-end luxury vehicle, not just a Volkswagen GTI. So kudos to Volkswagen for making this thing look really, really good. Feels a lot more upscale than you would think. So looking at the rear end, we of course have the Golf R style wing, as I mentioned earlier. I I also love the GTI badging right here, front and center in the middle, just below the Volkswagen logo. That looks really nice. I also think Jeremy's diffuser that he added here definitely spices up the rear end a little bit, ties it all together. And the exhaust tips seem to fit nice and snug, pretty perfectly around those cutouts. So overall, it really ties it in nicely. So to climb into the back of the GTI, you can open it with the button on the key fob, but that's not the cool way to open this trunk. And I absolutely love this. You come to the Volkswagen emblem here and you push forward on it. This turns into the handle and you use that to open up the trunk. How cool is that? Very characteristic of Volkswagen, and you do not see other automakers using their badge as the handle of the trunk. We have 19.9, almost 20 cubic feet of cargo space with all the seats in place, and a max cargo capacity of 34.5 cubic feet. We also have a lot of nice touches back here, including LED lighting, tie-down hooks, and grocery bag hangers. Very, very nice. We also have a privacy cover that's tethered to the tailgate, and one of the coolest attributes of the rear end of the GTI, pulling up the floor of the trunk to get to the spare tire. Check this out. There's these little latches right here that recess into the bodywork and you push this up and that actually holds this in place so you can get to your spare tire more easily without having to hold this up. I mean, come on, that is ingenuity at its finest right there. Love that. And the last neat little quirk of the tailgate of the GTI is this random awkward looking hole right here. In the US models, this does not come with a road triangle that is a regulation that you have to have in Europe. But in America, you don't have to have that, so they just left it empty. <laughs> Climbing into the rear of the 2023 GTI, we have the continuation of that plaid pattern on the seats from the front to the rear, so that's always nice. We also have two USB-C ports down below, and we have two and a half-ish cup holders right here. If you need this though, there's also a pass-through. You can pull this part of the center armrest down, so to speak, and now you can put longer items like skis, a snowboard, or wood, whatever you need to store in the GTI without having to sacrifice the use of these seats back here. Pretty cool. All right, now climbing into the front seats of the 2023 GTI. Overall, my first impression is that it seems to be a relatively well-built and solid interior, especially for this price range. I'd say my favorite parts right off the bat, this steering wheel, it has really nice nine and three grips right here. It also is kind of like a D-shaped, almost not really, but overall it looks and feels really nice. We have this little chrome Volkswagen badge in the center. We also have our capacitive touch buttons on the right and left. We have our cruise control on the left and our menu controls and our heated steering wheel button on the right. Another one of my favorite attributes are these seats. They have this classic style Volkswagen pattern 
in the center. It's not the exact same one as the old ones, but it's still an homage to the GTI and Volkswagen in general. They also have Alcantara on the bolstering and they're all one piece. There's not a separate headrest for it. So overall they look and feel really good. The door cards also have an added Alcantara touch as well right here. Looks and feels sharp. My first impression of the dashboard though, it seems a little bit bland. I like the honeycomb look right here, but maybe I wish it was a little bit more textured, I'd say, in my own personal opinion. Or there were just some kind of more touches that kind of spiced it up and gave it a little bit more flair. But nonetheless, I'm not complaining about it. This is with the car off though, but once we turn the car on, we have the gauge cluster screen, the infotainment screen, and the ambient lighting that take this interior to the next level. Taking a look at our infotainment screen, this is an eight inch touch screen, but the biggest complaint that people have about the new GTI are the climate controls. Mark, you just said we're talking about the infotainment system though, not the climate controls, right? But you have to access the climate controls via the infotainment system, via a multi-step process, which really shouldn't be. At least we do have the volume and two knobs in this trim level though, but to explain going through the climate controls, you can either push this button below the infotainment screen, that's marked Clima, and you can access the climate controls there. You can set which fan direction you want, and you can scroll up and down here to change the fan speed. You can either tap or just hold and drag this button right along. You can also go into the heated seat button and that'll bring up the climate control page as well. Besides that big gripe, which I definitely agree with, the infotainment system seems to be pretty intuitive overall though. At least this GTI doesn't have that capacitive touch climate control system below that a lot of people are complaining about as well. You just have to go into the screen and use it via that way. A climate control button that is included in this interior though is over on the left next to this little panel that also operates your headlights. Check this out. You push this button right here that turns on your headlights of course but below that is the front and rear windshield defrosting buttons that's pretty interesting i don't know why they just didn't take those buttons and put them right down here there's a perfectly fine piano black piece right here that's looking very blank and would love to have some buttons down below it but nonetheless you get your front and rear defrosting buttons next to your headlight controls this trim of the gti does come with wired and apple carplay and android auto but the se and the autobahn get the upgraded wireless apple carplay android auto going through it right now i'm clicking on apps the touch is pretty responsive takes maybe a quarter of a second to switch between menus. I can easily cycle through the phone page, the radio, the vehicle information, the sound settings and whatnot. The digital gauge cluster also looks really, really cool. Very Audi, like I get it, it's a Volkswagen. However, it is cool that they implemented that with this car. It reminds me a lot of the virtual cockpit, so to speak. You can cycle through all these different viewing modes with this view button right here on the right side of the steering wheel. You can see we have an adaptive cruise control section as well as another section that shows a large tachometer very neat look. These capacitive touch buttons take a little bit of getting used to for me. I'm typically just used to regular old physical buttons, but with one panel here on each side, it cleans up the look of it and that looks really nice. We also have our drive mode selector button just below the clima control buttons and a wireless phone charger down here. Moving down from the center stack to the center console, we have this little storage compartment here. I guess it's maybe good for a couple pens, maybe a phone just to kind of halfway hang out here. But other than that, it seems like a kind of waste of space, a little bit of a useless storage compartment in my opinion. I feel like they could have better implemented this into the center console. Next to that, we have our engine start stop button, our park button, and this tiny little knobby shift lever that everyone likes to make fun of. Looks like a little hair trimmer, a little chicken nugget or something like that. But I will say it's intuitive enough with its use if you just read the RND slash S on the lever, you pull it down to go into drive, push it up like a half click to go into neutral, and then you push it all the way up to go into reverse. So it's easy enough to figure out. And then of course below that we have our electronic parking brake right there. Moving down to the cup holders, we have two decently sized cup holders, but my favorite part is that we have this little button right here. What does that do? Oh, nothing. It just activates the extendo cup holder right here. Check this out. And now you can put pretty much any size drink right here. Very cool feature. Love that. And to put that away, you just push this part of the mechanism right here to close it up. We also have our 12 volt outlet right here, conveniently located, I must say. And we have a decent sized center console with a little bit of storage space in here. It's actually a lot better than previous versions of the GTI, so I've heard. And the center armrest also is adjustable. You pull it up a little bit and you can lock it right there. So you have an armrest exactly designed to where you want it to be. It can also extend forward and back to further add to your driving position comfort and to close it up you can just push this back raise it all the way up and then put it all the way down and now let's get to the part we've all been waiting for in the 2023 gti taking it out for a spin 
Alrighty guys, now we're off in the 2023 Golf GTI 40th Anniversary Edition. And today for this video, we have the owner, Jeremy, here with me. Say hello, Jeremy. Hey, hello. So a couple of things I forgot to mention. This car comes standard with a seven speaker audio system, but the Harman Kardon upgraded stereo system, which is nine speakers total, is an additional option that you can get. Also in the rear seats, I absolutely love these two tier backseat pocket setup. It is awesome. I love how they implemented that. Very, very useful there. So we've been driving in eco mode and Jeremy agrees that eco mode is definitely the more boring of yes, all the drive modes definitely. of course that's an obvious one and we have four different drive modes to choose from we have eco comfort sport and then custom custom apparently you can change all the settings even stiffer settings rather than sport sport just kind of dials it in how they see the sport mode should be but in custom you can dial it up to 11 with the throttle response the steering feel and the suspension stiffness and whatnot all right so now let's put it into custom so jeremy has it turned up all the yep. way to as high as it can go as far as its sportiness is so if you just go into regular custom it'll be in sport mode automatic um, to activate going into manual mode all you have to do is just shift with the paddles and it'll bump you into manual mode. when does it kick me out of the paddle shifters though if i bang off the rev limiter would it stop it, will it? not no come on it's supposed to be a sports car <laughs> well you bang off the rev limiter but then does it stay in manual shifting yes. mode yep so all right so i'll just keep it in manual downshift to second <laughs> <laughs> the upshift farts are fun. Yeah. <laughs> they uh, got a lot louder with the Miltech cat back. Okay. That's for sure. In the sharpest steering setting, I have maybe about an inch of on-center play in the steering. I'm not going to lie, Jeremy. I'm sorry to say, but <laughs> that's not too impressive. All right. No one behind us. No one in front of us. Let's do a full throttle send. You can stop. do launch control if you'd like. Oh, yeah? You just gotta have traction control off. Okay, ready? Yep. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> was it supposed to work like that? Did I do yeah, it right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> So I don't know, was it were the tires spinning? It didn't yeah, feel like I, it. It doesn't feel like it in this car. That but is it so does, weird. yeah. That it was like the it was tires like, up. It just felt like it was floating like for a second. Walks, and then yeah. it, <laughs> Once I get it tuned, it'll be a little more exhilarating. But yeah, yeah, definitely. Because these cars wake up drastically with oh, the yeah, tune. I bet. I will say the gauge cluster, the digital dash is really, really cool. It just looks so high end for what you expect out of this yeah. car. That definitely brings like a luxury high end feel to it overall for sure. It's definitely fun for a daily driver. Yeah, absolutely. But it's still comfortable enough. Yeah. It has all these tech features that you wouldn't want to sacrifice. I just feel like it has a very well-rounded jack of all trades, yeah. best of all exactly. worlds kind of attitude, you know? It's, it's a very good car for a little bit of everything. Yeah. It, you got the luxuries of having a hatchback. You can yep. fit whatever you need to. My old one, I had, a, I had a 2012 GTI. I was able to move out of college and I fit my entire dorm room in the back of that thing. And it, it was a two-door hatch. So um, that's, that's extra impressive. Exactly. You probably didn't have a lot of stuff though. I had a good amount. I, I put a mini fridge in the back of that thing. Oh, yeah? <laughs> and you still get good gas mileage. Yeah. I, I get 28 miles to the gallon. Yeah. All right, so we're testing out this car, how it goes over bumps. In sport mode. In sport mode. With or custom setting. with an even higher than sport <laughs> mode. And, uh, yeah, we're getting bounced around. Yeah. But, all right, I just drove an M2 yesterday, and, th <laughs> no, this is a lot better than that. And now for our back sake, we're going to put it into comfort, and we'll see how it lightens up. Um, It's actually a lot better. <laughs> yeah. Not nearly as bouncy. Yeah, it definitely makes it more of a soft, cushy, floaty bounce over all these terrible bumps rather than, you know, just getting sent to the moon. All right, back in custom mode now. We're on a better road. Let's give it the beans. <laughs> yeah, this thing's fun, man. Yeah. ripping around yeah, in this thing. It's fun. This thing's a little hoot. All right, we're gonna do another launch. Ready? Three, two, one, go. <laughs> I 
<laughs> I shifted up. Did you? Yeah, I pulled the paddle. Jeremy, <laughs> sorry, man. <laughs> the launch control is nothing. It's launch nothing control crazy. could be better. <laughs> oh, I know. I think honestly, it's faster if you just match the gas from a stop. Yeah, you know what? Let's try it. I, I think the I haven't tried that, but I, I've heard that the launch control is mainly just for um, a selling point. Well, that and it, less stress on the drivetrain. Yeah, I could see that. From, you know, a dig. All right, just full throttle, send, no launch control. Three, two, yep. one, go. Traction control kicked on. I thought we had it all it's off. It's all the way off. That's no, it's crazy. not all the way off. That, it's gotta be. That fought traction right there. No, that's all the way off. It does cut power in first gear when it's It spins. does, it does. That's as far off as you can put it. Absolutely fantastic, especially compared to its straight line performance. Corners are where it's at in this car. I haven't even been able to take this car out and drive it like how you've been driving <laughs> it yet. I take it to work and back, and that's it. <laughs> all I've been able to do with it. Here we go. Yeah, it loves corners. It does. Absolutely yeah. love corners. And the braking is responsive. It feels nice and firm. No. This is a real driver's car, man. But fix launch control, Volkswagen. Launch control Seriously. really needs some it tuning. It needs a little bit more oomph. It is not it's, uh, exciting. Feels like a little pat on the back. Yeah, it's it feels like we're going, ooh, we yeah. float, and then yeah, we go for the It pull. feels like you're floating. And then eventually, once you hit maybe halfway through second gear, right. then you get the power. So my conclusion, is the GTI absolutely perfect in every single way? No. Are there more fun cars that you can get, especially on the used market, for under 30 grand? Yes. However, I'm not exactly sure why people are harping so much on the new GTI. After spending the whole day with it, it's grown on me more and more and more. It truly has. And I'm not just saying that because Jeremy's nice enough to let me review his car for the day. I truly mean that. This car is like a jack of all trades, a Swiss army knife, so to speak, of cars. It does everything decently well. Yes, I agree that climate control should have actual physical knobs. I completely agree with that. But overall, the amount of tech that this car has, especially for its price point, is truly impressive. This vehicle actually has a lot of grown-up luxury features that you typically don't see in this segment of hot hatches. It also has a rather luxurious feeling interior and build quality, yet it still is zippy, fun to drive, and has playful handling. And to boot, pun intended, it has a max cargo capacity of 34.5 cubic feet. And on top of that, it can get 34 miles per gallon with the dual clutch on regular 87 octane gas. With all of that being said, this seems to be an excellent choice for a driving enthusiast commuter car and his family vehicle all in one in a brand new car. So what do you guys think of the 40th anniversary edition of the GTI? Do you think it's a good bang for your buck value? Do you think it's worth it instead of paying $40,000 for the Autobahn trim? Let me know in the comments below what you think. Also, how do you think this car compares to the Elantra N, the Civic Si, even the new WRX, or even the much more expensive all-wheel drive Golf R? And I have to thank Jeremy so much for letting me come out here and drive his 2023 Golf GTI. I really appreciate it, man. Thank you so much of for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button and also consider subscribing. It really helps me out to grow my channel, guys, and I sincerely appreciate it. Take care, stay safe out there, and I'll see you on the next one. Have a great rest of your day. Peace.